Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Emily. This is gonna be a slightly different video to my usual ones. I'm usually quite bubbly. This is gonna be a bit more of a serious video. And um, for those of you that don't know, it is International Mental Health Week. Um, and I'm gonna be help spreading awareness by telling you about my story. So grab yourself a cup of tea because I'm gonna be spilling the tea on my life. So I've got my iPad here because I've written some notes so I don't leave anything out. Um, so on, obviously, like just a little warning, this video is obviously going to be talking about mental health and stuff so it could be a trigger to some of you. So click off the video if you don't think it's going to be for you. Um, but yeah, I'm just here to tell you my experience. Um, so my first panic attack. At the time, I didn't realise... It was a panic attack. So I was shopping with two of my friends in um, in a shopping mall, and we like you know like your usual clothes shopping. Um, and I just remember feeling like really sick. Um, I just had like a milkshake, and I just remember feeling really sick. And I don't know, I felt all just like I just felt really worried and ill. Um, and I remember calling my mum like you need to pick me up like now but it was like 25 minute drive so it took it it felt like it took me forever to get there and my friend sat with me we sat outside on a bench and I just remember shaking like I was so so shaky and I got home and I was actually in the bathroom and my legs were just could not stop shaking and I was like I'm gonna be sick like I feel so sick like I couldn't breathe properly and my mum was just like my god like calm down like what like what's wrong with you i think it was almost like a, she was worried as well but she didn't know what was going on so she was like what's like that you're fine like what's wrong like just calm down um and like i just i went to bed and then for literally like a week after that i was just constantly dizzy it's like i woke up dizzy i was actually dizzy like all day i couldn't walk in a straight line i couldn't get off the sofa um just without feeling really well anxious but I didn't know at that time what anxiety and panic, atta panic attacks was um so yeah I was just feeling like yeah panicky um and then so mum took me to the doctors because she was like enough's enough like what on earth is going on and um, and the doctor said I had severe anxiety and panic attacks so me and mum were like what is that like like am I dying do you know what I mean like what is that because I feel like I'm dying am I dying um and obviously she explained what it was um and I went home I just felt a bit like clueless still with like what the hell it was and what was going on so obviously we did our research um it was really scary and for ages and ages I did just didn't want to go out anywhere um like when I was going out I was having major major bad panic attacks like I just wanted to be at home all the time um, my friends were meeting up so also at this time I was like year 10 so how old was that like 14 I was always the young one in the year as well so I guess I think I must have been like 14 say 14 15 I was year 10 anyway um when this started and yeah it was just I was going to school, but I literally spent most of year 10 and, a year, and year 11 in medical. Um, I was constantly leaving the classroom. It's really weird because I was really lucky, like, not to be bullied. Like, I know that sounds ridiculous, but to everyone else, like, I must have looked so weird because I would be in a classroom and all of a sudden I'd be like, like, I need to get out, I need to get out right now. Um, and I would literally... Um, just get up and be like, I've, I've missed, I've got to go, I've got to go, I've got to get out of here. Um, and I'd end up just taking myself to medical. Um, I remember once I was in a English lesson, but it wasn't in our usual classroom and something just triggered it. And um, we were literally, I, I was like, I have to like get out of here. Um, luckily there was like, everyone was in the classroom so no one was really walking around in the hallway so I was sitting on a step and I remember literally having like the biggest panic and I literally just lied on the floor like I was literally lying on the floor at school in the hallway like 
it's it's weird like it's mental to think like how far i've come um and my teacher called for medical and a medical lady and the head of year came down and they were just like get up get up and i was like no, no no like you don't understand i can't get up and they were just like get up like i was like i'm gonna faint like i'm gonna die and they were like well if you faint you faint get up i was like thanks that's really helpful um anyway i managed to get up and literally i don't even know how i got to medical because it was like the other side of school and i was just i was just stayed and um yeah they were like what's going on like is it somebody at home like is your dad still at home all this stuff and i was like what like yeah it's nothing to do with my home life i've just developed this horrible thing called anxiety and panic attacks and it just won't leave me alone and they were just horrible like i really didn't get i didn't get good answers um they were they were good at the start they had sympathy and gave me strategies at the start the medical lady gave me an elastic band and i could ping it every time i felt anxious to get like the pain would make me think about being in pain rather than um feeling panicky um but as time went on and on and i had more and more panics they just did not care i remember once it was um it was sports day and it wasn't sports day it was like we used to have this thing called interform interform i think that was right where um all your form groups like all your tutor groups um all got together and you played like a sport against each other's forms um and we were doing i can't even remember what sport it was but i ended up having a panic and being like um to my teacher i'm really panicking like i need to get out i need to go down to medical and as I was on my way to medical, um, the medical lady actually walked past and I was like, I'm really panicking. Like, I, I was like, can you help me? Can you help me? And she was with the head teacher as well. I was like, please, can you help me? Can you help me? I'm really panicking. And she just, they literally, they were literally just like, no, I don't have time for this today. And they walked past me and just carried on going. And I had never felt so scared. Like, I was petrified i had no one around me everyone was on the field um playing um whatever sport it was and everyone else was in classrooms and i felt i was just so scared and literally just for like that's it like i'm dying it was just horrendous um i managed to get back to the field and one of my best friends um spoke to my teacher and he gave her permission to take me into an empty classroom and we just sat together for like an hour and I just managed to calm myself down but it was just horrendous like I really hope um these teachers have had training now because it was awful like I think I'm 22 now so it's been it's it was a good few years ago that's like what if I was 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 it could have been like seven years ago so i feel like mental health wasn't spoken about as openly and like people didn't know about it as well like didn't wasn't they weren't like educated enough on it um so i think i'm hoping that they they're like more sympathetic now with students because it is a really tough time in your year in your year in your life um and i didn't realize but um recently mama said she thinks it all started when i started my period so i haven't made that connection um but mum did let me just get my ipad um yeah so i i feel like i was really lucky going back to the not being bullied thing um i was always bottom set for pretty much everything so i feel like people in bottom set they were kind of had like their own issues like a lot of people in my classrooms had their own issues so I feel like I wasn't picked on um but then in like your main lessons like maths English science like those main core subjects even though I was like bottom set or set into bo second to bottom set I had some cool people in there popular people in those classrooms and like they witnessed me having like panic attacks and stuff but i never like no one ever i don't i don't know if anyone said anything 
behind my back but nobody ever make a comment or anything and everyone was like really understanding and it was just part of me it was weird everyone just accepted it I don't know I bet schools now are literally horrible kids are horrible <laughs> but I was really lucky um and I remember you know like in in science rooms you don't have those chairs with the back on you just have stools and our science block was so high up it was probably like four flights up and I was always like right at the top um and you always had the stools to sit on and that was really bad like if you felt dizzy because you couldn't just like lean back so I was always like so dizzy as a side effect of panicking and anxiety um and I always just like I always used to stand up and I was always like in the front of the class as well for some reason and I literally used to just stand up like the whole classroom would just be sitting down like listening to the teacher but I would be standing up like fidgeting like standing there like I think I'm gonna have to leave I think I'm gonna have to leave like but it yeah it was it was literally crazy school for me um I need a cup of tea it's really hot that's the thing about cup of teas you make them but then you can't drink them for like half an hour so anyway a few a couple of years passed by and I left school um and I went to college and I th and the anxiety and panic attacks were still really bad but they'd got better um I was getting the train every day to go in to college and obviously to get home again as well um I had really good friends and family around me that all supported me through it as well um I went through a phase of literally not seeing my um friends and then um I did see my family like my cousins and that but it was always really difficult for me like quite often the time I was there I'd just be so anxious I could cover it up quite well which has always been a it's been a good thing for me I can always sort of I think people find it quite hard when I am feeling anxious to tell now because I've had it for like seven eight years I've learnt like how to just carry on laughing and talking while I'm coping with a lot in my head um right now I don't panic I don't panic often at all anymore, but I do have anxiety every day. That is always definitely 100% once a day where I'm like, oh, I do not feel good. I think I need to get out of here. So I definitely get that once a day. Um, I don't know what year it was, but I went back to the doctors and they suggested um, going on medication. Um and my parents weren't too keen on the idea because they were like you're so young like do you want to be on medication now and um, then my doctor said I always remember this he said if you broke your leg would you bandage it up yes you would wouldn't you so just because it's not a physical illness or physical injury doesn't mean you shouldn't treat it so it's still it's still there it's still a problem but you just can't see it so with the right medication that was going to help me so from then on i've had medication that i just take once a day it's not a very high dosage but it stopped me from having the panic attacks every day so for me it's a win-win um but the anxiety is still there strong <laughs> um and then i went to college at for two years and studied childcare, and then after that i went and did another two years of studying but while i was working um it was kind of an apprenticeship but it wasn't apprenticeship because I was already a level two qualified so I was doing my level three which isn't classed as an apprenticeship but it was kind of the same vibe if you get what I mean um so yeah so I was panicking all the time like the panic attacks hit hard like I was literally a mess but like the stress was so bad I did not have a good work relationship with people there my manager well actually I, I'm not going to get into that because I shouldn't I shouldn't um slag off businesses but if you know where I worked before that's not yeah that's not a great thing to say but it wasn't good okay <laughs> it was really bad and I had panic attacks all the time um and I really wanted to become a nanny a private nanny but I just felt like I couldn't go into that kind of job because I panic all the time. Like I'm in sole charge. How of a child? Like, how is that going to work? Like if I'm in a nursery and I panic, I could leave the room and ask someone to cover. There would always be someone to cover me while I needed to take five minutes, an hour <laughs> out. And so yeah, I was like, how am I ever going to do this? Anyway, I became a nanny, 
and it was the best decision of my life. I've got the best family ever that I work for um, and I'm super lucky and I haven't had to leave there once. Like, it's great. I never panic. I never feel anxious there. Um, yeah, it's just... Well, I guess I can feel anxious sometimes depending on what I'm doing with her. But it's like at a level, like you can keep it at a level. So like I don't have like major meltdowns, which is obviously like my main thing. Like feeling anxious is like the norm for me nowadays. Um, but it's the not having like major meltdowns, which is obviously important. Um, so cancelling. I tried. Um, I tried over the phone cancelling. Um, that was on the NHS. Um, oh no, before that, so before that, I tried cams and girl, I was on a waiting list for a long time. I never got seen. I was on that waiting list like four years and I just thought, something's got to be done. That, oh, oh, me spilled my tea. That was it. So when I originally went to the doctors that first time, they um, put me on a waiting list for cams. I never got seen. It was the biggest waste of time in my life. Not saying it will be for you, you've got to give it a go. But for me, it was a big space of time because I never got seen. Um, so then I tried um, on the phone cancelling, um, where it was just a lady that I spoke to once a week. But for me, it didn't work because... Oh, I'm out of breath, I was talking. Um, yeah, for me, it didn't work because it was on the phone. Like, I need face-to-face. -face. Like, it wasn't it wasn't great, really. Um, and I needed strategies, like coping... Um, what they called coping strategies but she didn't give them to me so it wasn't great um and then i tried private counseling which was expensive but i thought would be worth it but to be honest it was one of those things where i it kind of hit me like i'm literally paying like 60 pounds an hour to talk to this lady about stuff that i talked to my mum about for free so i was like what is the point because she wasn't giving me like any strategies or anything i think that's the thing with counseling they don't really give you like ways to help yourself which is what most people with anxiety need they need breathing like what's it called like breathing strategies and stuff but yeah it wasn't great so that was i gave up with counseling after that um i also as well i totally understand like i feel like um it was quite scary when I moved in with my boyfriend Toby because um, I was so scared that he was just going to get so annoyed with me. Like, I'm someone as well, like, I don't, do not suffer in silence. Like, if something's going on in here, everybody around me going to know about it. <laughs> like, yeah, everyone's going to know about it. Because I, most of the time, it depends where I am. Like, if I'm around people that I don't know or stuff like I can like put on a brave smile and you kind of get on with it most of the time but yeah if I'm like just at home and stuff everyone's gonna know that I've got something going on in my head because I need that reassurance reassurance is key for me honestly if I'm feeling panicky someone just needs to say you're gonna be fine <laughs> and that will literally make me feel a thousand times better and um, the other thing as well, like, if someone is feeling anxious, feeling panicky, and they want something, the best thing you can do is just get it for them and do it for them. Because for me as well, I've noticed, like, within the last, like, well, since I moved out, so, like, two, two and a half years ago, I realised that car journeys are amazing for calming me down. So if I've had a really stressful day, um, if I've had a really stressful day or a panic attack or whatever... I've been really anxious all day then Toby always takes me out on a drive which is so nice we just drive for like 20 minutes half an hour by the time I get home I feel completely calm and I'm ready for like bed usually um so that works really well for me um but yeah I am going to I will leave helplines and links to websites in my bio um yeah I hope you found this video interesting um if anyone has any questions or comments please do comment below because i will reply to them honestly having anxiety and panic attacks this long it can pretty much answer any questions <laughs> um but yeah i'm gonna end this video here don't forget to like subscribe comment down below all of that good stuff and i will see you in the next video bye guys